A new form of medicine called gene silencing has been approved for use by the NHS in England. The drugs will be used to reverse a disease called amyloidosis, which causes nerve and organ damage and can be fatal. Here's our health and science correspondent, James Gallagher. Neil and Vince Nicholas know the pain of amyloidosis. They had toxic proteins building up inside their bodies that were damaging their nerves and weakening their hearts. The disease runs through families and eventually it's deadly. It's decimated our family. But they've been given gene silencing medicine that can halt and even reverse their disease. And you just hope that someone's going to invent a drug that will do it. You know, I'm lucky that I'm here today to be able to talk to you about that. This is how it works. Inside our cells are genes. They send out messengers containing instructions for running our body. But in this form of amyloidosis, a rogue gene leads to a buildup of toxic proteins. Gene silencing intercepts the messenger, disabling it and restoring the correct balance of proteins. Today's decision applies in England as choices on which drugs to fund are devolved in the UK. Scotland made it available in June. This is huge. Uh, this is making a disease that was previously untreatable, treatable and has the potential to make patients' lives dramatically better. The drug may have saved Neil's music career as he was starting to lose feeling in his fingers and his voice. But the implications of this study go much further than the brothers and amyloidosis. Experts say gene silencing is an exciting new era of medicine with the potential to work in diseases that are currently untreatable. James Gallagher, BBC News. Well, Parkinson's disease and Huntingdon's could also both be treated with this gene silencing medicine. We can talk now to Kath Stanley, who's the chief executive of Huntingdon's Disease Association, is with me in the studio. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. So it's, it's currently only being used uh, to reverse amyloidosis. Why not Huntingdon's at the moment? So it, there was a, an initial safety trial for Huntington's disease, which did show that it lowered the Huntington protein. Mm -hmm. And they're con currently recruiting for a big trial to make sure that it is safe and effective and does actually lower the Huntington protein. These are rare diseases. Just tell us more about Huntington and what it does. So Huntington's is a very rare disease. There's about 8,000 people in the UK with the illness. And for every one of those people who have the illness, there are four people who are at risk from inheriting it. Mm -hmm. If you inherit the gene, you will go on and develop symptoms. Symptoms of the illness usually occur between the ages of 30 and 50. They begin quite insidiously and then progress. So people have problems with thinking, cognitive problems, they have problems with the motor disorder, so have involuntary movements, and they have behavioural and mental health problems. And so this gene silencing therapy could be absolutely transformational for patients. I mean, what, what could it do? What, could, what would your hope be? So the plan would be that it would either delay the onset of symptoms so that people could live longer without the symptoms of Huntington's, or ultimately actually never develop the illness at all. Mm -hmm. So it's a real hope for people. And how long would you expect the process to take while they assess how effective it can be for Huntington's? And, and, and is there any reason to expect that it, it shouldn't work for Huntington's when it is working for amyloidosis? There is no reason. I think certainly researchers are very optimistic. Mm -hmm. I think realistically in terms of a treatment for Huntington's we're probably talking at least five years away for the trial to carry out and then for it to go through all the, the um, drug approval process. Currently, what treatment is there for Huntington's? So there's a treatment for symptoms, there's treatment for mental health symptoms, there's treatment for the mood boost disorder, there's very little um, treatment for the kind of thinking cognitive. So people have a, a, a cocktail of drugs that can help with symptoms, mm -hmm. but doesn't actually change the process of the illness. And this obviously would be, if it were to come through in, in five years potentially, it would be something, as you say, that would be used hopefully prior to symptoms becoming exactly becoming obvious mm. and and would somebody uh, uh, people would, would people know if they have the gene I mean how would that how would that be, be so managed? you can have a, a what's called a predictive test that will yeah. tell you whether or not you carry the gene 
um, at this moment in time, the majority of people at risk of Huntington's choose not to have that because it doesn't change the fact that they will get the illness. But obviously, if there was prospect of treatment, that would change dramatically. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for coming in and talking to us. Thank, Thank you. you.